The Chuanuri from the Xuan brothers, two of its leaders, was a royalist uprising or counter-revolution in twelve of the western départements of France, particularly in the provinces of Brittany and Maine, against the French First Republic during the French Revolution. It played out in three phases and lasted from the spring of 1794 until 1800. The uprising was mostly caused by the civil constitution of the clergy, 1790, and the levée en masse, 1793, decided by the National Convention. A first uprising attempt was carried out by the Association Bretonne to defend the French monarchy and reinstate the specific laws and customs of Brittany that had been repealed in 1789. The first confrontations broke out in 1792 and evolved to a peasant revolt, then to guerrilla warfare and eventually to full scale battles until the Republican victory in 1800. Shorter peasant uprisings in other departements, such as in Aveyron and Lozier, were also qualified as chouaneries. The Petite Chouannerie broke out in 1815 during the Hundred Days and a final uprising ultimately took place during the Vendine War and Chouannerie of 1832. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins In 1791, the adoption of the civil constitution of the clergy caused the peasants around Vannes to rise in defense of their bishop Sébastien Michel Amelot against the Republicans of Lorient who wished him to swear the oath of loyalty to the civil constitution. The following spring, in the area around Campere, a justice of the peace led several parishes in a rising in the name of King Louis XVI against the local authorities. During the summer of 1792, incidents occurred in the districts of Carhex, Finister, Lanyon, Pontru, Cotes d'Armor, Crayon, Chateau Gontier, and Laval, Mayen, where the peasants opposed a levy of volunteers for the army. At Saint Ouen des Toits, in the department of Mayen, Jean Cotterot, known as Jean Chouan, led the insurgents. His nickname probably came from his imitation of the call of the Tani Owl the Chouette Hulot for a recognition signal. A reward was put on his head, but nevertheless he reached England in March 1793. The Republican administration recognized him and his brother as the leaders of the revolt. <laughs> Course First phase 1794–1795 In January 1794, the Vendines of the Vendée Militaire, following the setback of the Vare de Galerne, tried to resist the infernal columns of General Louis-Marie Thoreau. During this time, groups of Schwans north of the Loire took up arms again in the areas crossed by the Vendines. The Chouannery was born on the borders of the Mayen and of the Ile et Vilaine, near Fougeres, Vitre and Laval. These small groups led by Jean Chouan, Aimé du Bois Guy and Jean-Louis Tretton nicknamed Hambi d'Argent, i.e. Silver Leg, regrouped Chouans and Vendines who survived the Vare de Galerne, leaders who were compromised in the peasant uprisings of March 1793 and even deserters. Condemned to live in almost total secrecy, the Schwans knew that being captured by the Republicans would mean certain death. Most of them were motivated by a desire to avenge their relatives who had disappeared in the Vare de Galerne. In guerrilla warfare, Schwans in groups of a few score or a few hundred men ambushed military detachments, couriers, and stagecoaches carrying government funds. They attacked Republican towns, executed informers, constitutional priests, and Republicans, a large number of them administrators. To oppose the Schwans, Republicans built strongholds or fortified towns which were defended by local territorial guards. They were led by General Jean Antoine Rosignol, chief commander of the Army of the Coasts of Brest. A law enacted on 23 March 1793 mandated that captured insurgents should be executed by firing squad or by guillotine within 24 hours. Rosignol also assembled groups of fake Schwan outlaws in order to do as much as possible to discredit the real Schwans. Murders were carried out throughout the whole war with a varying degree of intensity. For example, in the district of Fougeres, in conflict between some 2,000 Schwans and a fluctuating number of Republicans, 219 people were assassinated or executed by Schwans and 300 by Republicans. This did not include deaths during fights, summary executions on the battlefield, or executions following the expeditive revolutionary due process of law. The Chouannerie spread quickly to Brittany and reached the Cotes d'Armor, dominated by the Chevalier de Boyhardy. 
On 15 March it reached Morbihan where Joseph de Fay and Bejeri former officers of the Vendine army assisted by Pierre Guillemot incited a peasant uprising aimed at Vannes. The insurgents were easily countered by the Republicans at the Battle of Mangalarian. However, in the Finister and the west of the Côtes d'Armor, the Bas Cornuai, the Léon and the Trégor did not take part in the uprising. Georges Cadoudal and Pierre Mathurin Mercier, nicknamed La Vende, rescued from the Battle of Savonnet, moved to the Morbihan where Boulainvilliers was appointed general-in-chief of the département. However, Boulainvilliers defected to ille et vilaine with money taken from headquarters. Sébastien de la Haye de Sils succeeded him as general. Boulainvilliers foolishly returned a few months later in the Morbihan, he was captured and shot by Pierre Guillemot's men. Other département, however, did not stand as united as the Morbihan. In the north of Anjou, Marie-Paul de Scapo de bois guignot was named commander for the north of Maine et Loire. His authority later extended to Loire-Atlantique, Mayen and Sarth. However, he commanded in name only, as in other département, his authority as a Schwann chief only extended to his own canton. Joseph de Puisse, a former officer compromised in the Federalist revolts, realized the necessity of centralized command and attempted to assume the function of general-in-chief of the Schwans. Recognized by some chiefs, Puisse embarked from Dinard to London on of September 1794 to meet future King Charles X of France. Major General Pierre Desito de Cormatin, his second in command, assumed command in his absence. Charles X favoured absolute monarchy and distrusted Puisse, who advocated parliamentary monarchy. However, following the intervention of British Prime Minister William Pitt the Younger, Puisse was appointed General-in-Chief of the Royal and Catholic Army of Brittany on 15 October 1794 with the rank of Lieutenant General thus entrusting him with the King's authority. His power thus extended to all the insurgent areas north of the Loire, including the Maine and Anjou, where Scapo appointed him general-in-chief. Maximilien de Robespierre fell on 28 July 1794. Consequently, the terror ended and the Convention Nationale became more flexible and open to negotiation. The agents royalists de Paris asked the Schwans in the name of Louis XVIII of France then Count of Provence to stop fighting. On 26 December, Brigadier General Jean Humbert and Schwann Chief Boyhardy met to discuss peace options. Puisse tried to organize a landing from London, his lieutenant Cormadin assumed full command and negotiated the Mabillay Peace Treaty in April 1795. He was followed by a minority of local leaders. Of the 121 leaders attending, only 21, including de Sills and Boyhardy, signed the treaty. Topic. Second phase 1795–1796 Because neither side had negotiated in good faith, there was an increase in tension following the death of Louis XVII on 8 June. The peace was broken on 26 August 1794 as General Lazare Hotch, who succeeded Jean-Antoine Rosignol as head of the Army of the Coasts of Brest, ordered the arrest of those who had refused to sign the Treaty of the Mabillay. Hotch thought that Cormatin was trying to outsmart him. Cormatin was imprisoned and would not be freed before 1802. Boyhardy, who did not sign, was killed during the night of 17 to the 18th of June between Brehand and Moncontour. Likewise, De Sills, who had taken up arms again, was attacked on the 28th of June at Grand Champ by the troops of Adjutant General Josnet. De Sills was killed in action and his men retreated. On 23 June 1795 a British fleet led by Commodore John Borlase Warren landed 3,500 soldiers of the émigré army in Carnac. They joined 15,000 Schwans led by Vincent de Tintiniac, Paul Alexander Dubois Berthelot and Jacques Anne Joseph Le Prester de Vauban, great-grandnephew of Marshal Sébastien Le Prester de Vauban. However, disagreements between the general of the émigrés Louis Charles Davily and the expedition leader Puisse cost the royalists precious time. A counterattack by Hotch forced the Schwans back to the Quiberon Peninsula. On 10 July, two columns of Schwann troops wearing English uniforms embarked on British ships from the peninsula and were landed behind Republican lines. However, the men from the first column, led by Lantevy du Rest and Jean Jan, scattered. The second column, led by Vincent de Tintiniac seconded by Georges Cadoudal, prepared to attack but received a message from the agents Royalist de Paris requiring them to join a second British landing at Côtes d'Armor. 
Tintiniac hesitated in the face of opposition from Cadudal, but obeyed the order. He was killed on the way at Coetlagan on 18 July. They reached the Bay of St. Brioc but no British fleet joined them, so they returned to the Morbihan and appointed Cadudal as their general. During this time, in Quiberon, reinforcements of 2,000 men led by Charles de Vereau de Sombroy joined the émigrés. They attempted to attack on 16 July but were crushed. Hotch launched a final assault on 20 July and routed the émigrés. Louis Charles Davily was fatally wounded, Puisse managed to board a British ship. The Republicans took more than 6,000 prisoners. 748 of them were shot by firing squad, including Sombroy. The day before his execution he wrote a letter to Commodore Warren denouncing the flight of Chief General Joseph de Puisse. This letter had an enormous impact on the Schwans. A council of officers in Morbihan sentenced Puisse to death in absentia. Puisse returned to Brittany in autumn 1795, where he was arrested by Pierre Mathurin Mercier and brought before Cadudal. Puisse defended himself vigorously and found he still had the support of the Count of Artois. Cadudal and Puisse were eventually reconciled. Guerrilla fighting resumed after the failure of the English royalist expedition and spread to Normandy where Louis de Frité, freshly landed in France in 1795, organized the uprising. Puisse had suffered some loss of reputation and blamed the Schwans of the Morbihan and their chiefs who, according to him, were hostile towards nobles and wanted to "...establish equality under a white flag." Puisse left the Morbihan for the Ile et Vilaine, where the division chiefs were of the nobility, and joined the Mordels division led by Jean-Joseph Rouault de la Tribonnière. He did not receive much more support than he had in the Morbihan, but remained commander-in-chief thanks to the support of the Count of Artois. Puisse wanted a chouannery led by nobles and founded the Company of the Chevaliers Catholiques. Several émigrés joined France to fight with the Chouans, but numerous disputes broke out between them. In January 1796, Puisse joined the Fougères Division, the most important one in Ile et Vilaine, and appointed as his chief Aimé Picket du Boisguy, chief general of the Ile et Vilaine and of the east of the Côtes d'Armor. However, in practice, Boisguy only controlled the east of Ile et Vilaine. Frite and Scapo acknowledged Puisse as general in chief in name only. To fight the Schwans, the Republican forces were organized in three armies. The Army of the Coasts of Brest, led by Lazare Hotch, based alternately in Rennes or Vannes, controlled the Finister, the Morbihan, the Côtes d'Armor, the Ile et Vilaine, and the Mayen. The Army of the West, led by Jean-Baptiste Camille de Canclo, based in Nantes, controlled the Loire-Atlantique, Le Main et Loire, the Vendée and the Der Sèvres. The Army of the Coasts of Cherbourg, led by Jean-Baptiste Annibal Aubert du Bayet, based in Saint-Malo, controlled the Manche, the Orne, the Calvados, the Sarthe and part of the Ile et Vilaine. In December 1795, the Directoire named Hotch chief general of all the Republican forces based in the West and gave him full authority. The armies of the West, of the coasts of Brest and of the coasts of Cherbourg were merged to form the Armée des Côtes de l'Oéan Army of the Coasts of the Ocean. Despite the Quiberon disaster, the Schwans gained some victories in the coming months. However, Hotch changed tactics in the beginning of 1796. He set up mobile columns, promised amnesty to Schwans who surrendered, guaranteed religious freedom and strove to discipline the army. Many Schwans and Vendines were amenable to these measures and laid down their arms. Hotch's priority was to pacify the Vendée. Jean-Nicolas Stofflet was captured and shot by firing squad in Angers on 25 February 1796. François de Charette was hunted down, imprisoned, and shot on 29 March 1796. His death marked the end of the war in the Vendée. Now that the Vendée was pacified, Hotch turned his attention to the Schwans. Faced by large Republican numbers, Schwan chiefs gradually surrendered. Scapo was the first to surrender, on 14 May. Georges Cadudal signed a peace treaty on 19 June. Louis de Frité refused to sign peace himself. He embarked for England and left his lieutenants to sign on 23 June. Aimé Picket du Boisguy was the last to surrender, on 26 June. Puisse returned to England. Third phase The uprising lasted until Republican victory in 1800. Schwann leaders 
The principal leaders of the insurrection were Georges Cadoudal, his brother Julien, Jean Cottereau, called Jean Chouan, Pierre Guillemot, known as the King of Bignan, Joseph de Puisset, Louis Charles de Sol de Grissels, Auguste and Sébastien de la Haye de Sils, John Louis Tretton, nicknamed Hombi d'Argent, Tristan Thermite, Michel Jacquet, known as Typher, Joseph Just Cocoro, Aimé du Boisguy, Boyhardy, Pierre Mathurin Mercier, and Bonfils de Saint Lou. In Brittany, the Schwans were supported by many nobles, Charles Armand Tuffin, Marquis de la Rowery, the Chevalier de Boyhardy, Count Louis of Rosmordic, the Picket Brothers of Boisguy, as well as by commoners the brothers Cadoudal. In Lower Normandy, Count Louis de Frat had a dominant role. One of the lieutenants in Lower Maine was Guillaume Le Metire, who was nicknamed Rochambeau. In the Vendée, the nobility were not able to play their normal military role. There was never any properly organized army, it consisted mostly of small elusive bands. The Schwann leaders were, above all, peasant farmers. In contrast to the earlier war in the Vendée of 1793, the Chuanery did not possess any territory, the cities and many towns having remained republican, but some districts did rise in open revolt. There was also the Petite Vendée in Lower Maine, controlled by the Prince of Talmont. The Chuanery was very difficult to suppress as its fighting forces had not been beaten in the battles of the Vendée War, it had many leaders and its army units were small and dispersed. <laughs> Depictions This rebellion is featured in the novel Les Schwans by Honoré de Balzac and The Man in Grey short story collection, a collection of short stories about the Schwans by Baroness Orsi, as well as being the central action of the novel The Marquis of Carabas by Raphael Sabatini. It is also depicted in paintings and popular imagery. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 Historical Jacques Duchemin des Seppo, Souvenirs de la Chouannerie, 1855 Émile Souvester, Scenes de la Chouannerie, Michel Lévy, Paris, 1856 Abbé Jean-François Paulouin, La Chouannerie du Maine et Pays Adjacents. 1793-1799-1815-1837 Avec la biographie de plus de 120 officiers, Monoyer, Le Mans, 1875 Jean Morvan, Les Chouans de la Mayenne, 1792–1796, Lévy, Paris, 1900 Abbé Almeyer Bielan, D.I.R., La Révolution dans la Mayenne Review bimestrielle, imprimerie Benderitter puis M. Valère, Le Mans, 1925–1937 Marc Vallon, Schwanz de la Mayenne, Edition Siloé, Laval, 1985 Jean Barreau, La Chouannerie Mayonnaise sous la Convention et le Directoire, Imp. Martin, Le Mans, 1988. Anne Burnett, Les Grandes Hers de la Chouannerie, Perrin, 1993 Roger Depay, Les Schwanz, Hachette Literature, 1997. Anne Burnett, Histoire générale de la Chouannerie, Perrin, 2000. Jean Laparte, Histoire de la Chouannerie dans la Sarthe, in Revue historique et archéologique du Maine, Le Mans, Tome CLIII, p. 13 64, 2002, and Tome CLV, p. 65 120, 2004. Hubert Lamarle, Dictionnaire des Chouans de la Mayenne, Editions Regionales de l'Ouest, Mayenne, 2005. Bernard Coquette, Le Dernier des Chouans Louis Stanislas Sortant, 1777-1840, Editions of Fries SPM, Paris, 2007. Works of fiction Honoré de Balzac, Les Chouans au la Bretagne en 1799, La Comédie Humaine, tome 13, also adapted as a film, Les Chouans, by Henri Calif, with Jean Marais, 1946. Victor Hugo, Quatrevinck tries. Jules Barbie d'Orvilly, L'Ensorcelet, and Le Chevalier des Touches. Michel Ragon, Les Mouchoirs Rouges de Cholet. The film Schwanz, by Philippe de Broca, with Philippe Noré, Sophie Marceau, Lambert Wilson and Stéphane Fryce, 1988.
D. K. Broster, The Yellow Poppy, published by Duckworth, 1920.